Good evening, everyone. Time for another member update. So let's start out with the uh, Bitcoin chart because we're going to spend the rest of the time on silver and looking at the new Lunar Series coin. So this is the Coinbase chart. And the reason I chose Coinbase is because that's what you can get for your coins. Um, you can see from the Coinbase chart that we had the very predictable bounce off of 3,000. Uh, it's, it's just right here in this chart. So uh, it, the thing that you want to think about here is when everybody talks about how we hit $5,000 Bitcoin, which we did just briefly in, in certain markets, but uh, how long did we actually spend? About 4000 And the truth of the matter is that really it was only from about August 14th, August maybe August 12th, uh, somewhere in here, maybe it was the 8th, but uh, let's see, I'll find the date up here, August 14th, so from August 14th to about August, or September 9th, uh, we didn't spend quite a month above 4,000, and that's when we got that breakdown, so that wasn't a lot of time to actually get these prices, now the main body of resistance is coming in you can see let's uh, move closer now again you can see this uh, breakout of this trend channel that is absolutely classic pattern the old high is established right there it's tested right there it's tested right here again successfully and it's and it's tested using a textbook rising pennant and it was that textbook rising pennant, I hate the way this doesn't draw, it was that textbook rising pennant pattern that got it through there and uh, made a sustained run, you can see, through 3,000 all the way up to 5,000. So now the question is going to be, how do we uh, get, how do we react as we try to get through? Basically, 4,000 is really going to be that next level, and you can see we're just kind of backing and filling here trying to get through it so a strong bounce off of 3,000 but we still have that rounding effect off of 5,000 so for those of you who did what I did and uh, bought Litecoin at you know in the 30s and bought Ethereum at uh, like a hundred and whatever uh, whatever that low price was I can't remember and uh, Bitcoin down around 3,000 this may be a, a profit taking point on some of those uh, we may round off, roll over, and then test lower. That is a possibility. Uh, that would be the scenario of where we get, you know, a long-term bear. Then again, you know, if we break out to the upside and we get through, the main price target is going to be this $4,500 price. If we get through that $4,500 price, that leaves all of this stuff behind us. And it's just blue skies. So that's what you want to keep your eye on on Bitcoin. I don't have a guess one way or the other. Definitely the Chinese thing was overblown. If you remember I mentioned last time, it was quite some time ago that China had China's percentage of the trading had decreased significantly. So I think that may be part of the reason why they're not having much of an impact. So um, the last time China tried to do something, in fact, the last three times China has tried to do something, the market's kind of ignored them, and they've just kind of become more irrelevant. Do the Chinese really want to do this? Is is Jamie Dimon doing a fake out? Now, if you remember, I said that, uh, that it might just be a fake out by the Wall Street banksters, and Zero Hedge just recently reported now that the whole time that Diamond was bashing Bitcoin, they were actually buying it on their European desk. And that's what I hinted at, you know, because that's the that's the type of pattern that Goldman does. So quite possible that uh, Wall Street banks are actually accumulating Bitcoin. We'll know fairly soon. Now I want to take you to the chart of the the bonds, specifically the two year note. And if you can see, if we go out on the monthly, you can see the big picture. Of course, the really big picture is the the dot com uh, bubble that blew up. You can see it blew up with uh, uh, low low interest rates, and then interest rates raising up, and then pop. That's where it popped. 
and you can see the Fed reacted to that dot com uh, bursting, which kind of took the other stocks, a lot of the telecoms, and all the rest went down. And you can see we had interest rates lowered all the way down to it was down around two one percent or whatever it was, and then uh, then stuff started to get heated up again. The Fed was able to raise rates fairly significantly all the way into 2007. They backed off a little in 2006 and 2007. And then that's when the big, big financial crisis occurred. And you can see they just kept lowering, kept lowering, kept lowering till we get into this 2009. And this is when the QE stuff started. So, And, and that's when we get here. For the first time, we're very close to being pegged to zero. And then you can see we, the Fed has been trying to ease off of this policy. Now, the weekly is what gives you the real picture of this. And again, this is the two-year note. But you can see here, starting in late 2013, this is an attempt by the Fed to do some tapering, sort of, get interest rates normalized again. And what's very interesting about this chart is just the jitteriness of it. Do you see how it goes down and then jumps back up, down, back up again, all the way back up. And just uh, up and down, up and down, up and down. So this is this isn't a real market. That that's that's not what real markets do. They don't jitter that fast because we're talking about just a month or two. Uh these are weeks. These these candlesticks, these are weeks. So you've got 3 weeks of uh, ri- 4 weeks of rising interest rates and then four weeks of plummeting interest rates. Then we get eight weeks of rising interest rates and six weeks of plummeting interest rates. And then a six weeks of rising rates. And it just goes on. So that's not a real market. That's the Federal Reserve trying to inch us back towards some, some type of reality. Now this move that came in here, you could see it coincides exactly with the election of Donald Trump. Because it's right here in the fall of the election year. And that's when we get significant spike. We get a fill back to the old support. And then now you can see we seem to be going down. So we've got that 107 price. Whereas we were pegged for many, many years to be around that 110 price. Just couldn't get away from it. Uh, But now with the election of Donald Trump, it looks like rates are going to rise. Now that again, that's just... The two-year note, uh, that's the shortest dated uh, one on this charts. But you can see the five-year, 10-year, they're not as weak uh, chart-wise. But the two-year seems to be leading the way. So we're going to keep a close eye on that one. Now let's get over the silver chart here. You know that we crossed over through that $18 price. Now we've backed up here and we're at $17.37. So you can see um, we're still trying to create that rounding bottom which is going to give us a that rising effect a breakout effect if we can get that to happen now I predicted that a crossover of the monthly MACD of the zero line of the monthly MACD would uh, get us off to the races in in another bull market something similar to what we had back in 2003 I think that's going to take a $22 price on silver. I think it's going to take a breakout above $22. So if we see this get taken out in a rising market, that will probably be enough to kick that MACD, monthly MACD, over the zero line, and then we'll be off to the races. But for now, it does not appear to be the case. So there's a lot of disillusioned silver stackers. It's kind of good that a lot of us are into both uh silver and the cryptos because silver and gold have been kind of really dead lately. I'm going to talk a little bit about that once we get into what I see for these uh, lunar coins. So this is the 2018 lunar series. It's going to be the year of the dog and they're now available and so what I like to do as you know Lunar Series is my favorite as far as collectible. It's the one that I see as a semi-numismatic coin that has the most potential. At least it has in the past. Now, as the famous Wall Street uh, saying goes, past performance is no indication of future results. And boy, is that ever true about everything. 
But uh, I have found that these Lunar Series coins have performed fairly strongly. So the big question is going to be for me, first off, the big determining factor that I've seen in my experience with the Lunar Coins so far is the aesthetics. Where does the coin rank in the aesthetics? Uh, do you like it? Is it uh, a beautiful coin? Is it an ugly coin? Is it a weird looking coin? How does it stand aesthetically? Now, the second thing is going to be what is the mintage? Because at some point, if the mintage is low enough, then just the collector nature of it is going to kick in and the there won't be enough for all the people who decide they want one of something because you have to remember there's six seven billion people in the world um if you've got something where you've only got the numbers of it in the thousands then if at some point it does become popular there's going to be a bidding war over it so let's talk about the first and then we'll talk about the second potentially and then i want to talk about the past performance of some of these other ones and where this one comes in. So let me say first off that just right out of the uh, right out of the gate my initial impression is positive of this coin. I like this coin better than some of the recent coins that I've seen. Um, part of it has to do just with the animal uh, there's animals that we like and there's animals that we don't like. Now I'm not particularly fond of a mouse, <laughs> but the there are one of the lunar mice series actually I think it's the 2008, don't quote me on that. But one of the mouse series has performed phenomenally and that one actually came just straight down to mintage because the mintage was ridiculously low. But then there are others that have performed very well based on the aesthetics who had a fairly high mintage but were aesthetically appealing. So, and again, this is all just uh, a matter of opinion. Um, you, it's, it's nothing that you can document. It's nothing that you can prove. And even if you took a survey and determined that uh, the majority of people liked a particular coin, you still have the mintage. You still have... Uh, the overall market effect. There's all kinds of factors going in there. So there's no way to really prove the case one way or the other. It's just kind of a hunch. So again, my initial on this coin is definitely going to be a thumbs up. I like the coin. Uh, just to say, beginning wise, I like the uh, I like the pattern that they chose. I like the way it's framed. I like the fact that they did what the Elephant series chose to do and put a little baby in there. That's kind of cute. Uh, I like the, the design on the dog itself. I think it's a really good design. I, I think maybe the, the puppy has a little bit to... Uh, it's not the best because it, it kind of... It almost looks like a miniature adult rather than a pup. So that's a little bit of a negative for me. But overall, yes, I like the coin. Um, so now it's going to come in the question of how is this coin going to break down? Because if you know, uh, in the past with the Lunar Series coins, I've always kept an eye on the one ounce. The one ounce is always the key coin just because that's the most popular coin by weight. Um, it has to do with the size of the coin. It's the same size as silver dollars have always been throughout hundreds or even thousands of years. Uh it's, it's hard to argue which one comes in second, whether it's the half ounce or the, the two ounce. Personally, I feel like the half ounce is the, set, it, the runner up. The half ounces aren't that small. Uh, you can see all the details of the coin. And the two ounces are just a little too bulky. They're a little too thick. They're a little too big. So I'm going to put it in the order of one ounce, then half ounce, then two ounce. Um, and in the past, as I've pointed out, uh, what I look at is the price starting with the one ounce. If I can, if the one ounce is ridiculously overpriced, then I just don't buy it. 
and I move to the half ounce and check what it's at. If the half ounce is unavailable or overpriced, the next thing I look at is the two ounce. So that type of analysis for this coin is kind of interesting here. This is the first time that we have seen uh, in a number of years the one ounce come out with a directly proportional price to the other two coins. I mean, it's not exact. If we take the half ounce coin and double it, it actually gives us a price of $25.50. Uh, and uh, if we take the two uh, one ounce and double it, that gives us a price of forty nine something, whereas the two ounce comes in at forty six. So just purely based on uh, the silver alone, for the a half ounce is going to come in over fifty bucks. Uh, two of these one ounce, uh, I'm sorry, yeah, two of these one ounces is, is going to come in at about fifty bucks, and then the one of the two ounces is going to come in. You can see at 46 bucks. So silver for the money, definitely the two ounce is the best deal. But is it going to be the best deal going forward? Is it going to appreciate the most? Um, I don't think so. Probably not with the one ounce being this cheap. That's just my guess. Now, the other thing you can notice here, this is just on Atmex. They've got 1240 of the one ounce. They've got 2846 of the two ounce. They've got only two of, I'm, I'm sorry, 28.46 of the half ounce, and they've only got two of the two ounce. But I've also got Jam Bullion and Provident Metals, and we'll look at those. Uh, the the one ounce price, they don't have one ounce here at uh, Provident. Over on JM, um, the one ounce is 25.35. So your your best deal on the one ounce, and they are available right now. Um, 2487. You have to buy a hundred or more to get 2487 at Atmex. So now the question is going to be, you know, which one do we choose? I'm definitely going to say with the one ounce uh, at under $25 that I'm going to go with the one ounce. Personally, that's my choice that I would choose in this situation. Now the other question is going to be, is the premium worth it? Because as I showed you, we're sitting around 1730 or so on the silver price. And we're coming in here on the one ounce at about 2480. So that's being generous. That's $7 premium. That's pretty expensive. Um, now where, but where does the competition come in? So let's, uh, Let's check a Silver Eagle just to see how much of a difference are we talking about and then maybe take a look at the Canadian. Okay, so you can see this as low as 1988. The Canadian one ounce as low as 1928. And the the Great Britain coin, I mean, they, these premiums are low. So let's see if this is actual. Yeah, so that is the actual price. You have to buy 500 or more to get that price. But still, we're talking just two, two something over spots. So now the big question is going to be where we're seeing the premiums on the Perth Lunar Series significantly higher than the premiums on these is it going to be justified and the only way to know if it's going to be justified is going to be whether or not um, the performance is there so I did a search here um, I'm gonna base my uh, analysis on my opinion for the coins uh, and it has been um, for me, it was the tigers and the horses. Uh, it's it's a close. I go back and forth. I'm still gonna I'm still gonna give the 2010 tiger number one position in aesthetics uh, for collectability. Uh, that's just my personal opinion. That doesn't mean anything except that's what I think. Uh, now I'm gonna put the horse in number two. So the big question is, are these holding up? 
And the answer is they're weakening. They're not weakening significantly, but they are weakening. So there's a couple of things you want to go by. You want to go by um, what are people paying for it? What's the lowest price people are paying for it? And you can see here the one ounce Tiger, 47 bucks. That's the lowest price. And you can see above that one went for 49 bucks, another went for 50 bucks. Uh, here's one that went for 55 bucks. Here's one that went for 60 bucks. Now, for quite some time, you couldn't find a, a one ounce tiger for under 60 bucks. So that is weakening. Um, not significantly, it's still 60 bucks for an ounce of silver, 50 bucks for an ounce of silver. So the tiger is still strong. There's no question that if you would have bought the Silver Tiger in 2010, actually it's going to be in 2009 through 10, but if you would have bought that coin as opposed to a Silver Eagle, you're definitely able to get more money out of it right now on eBay. Uh, I don't think there's going to be too much volume, but uh, then you would be out of that Silver Eagle. Now, the other one here is the horse. I've got these. You can do these any way you want. These are prices highest first. And then you can either do auction or all listing. Uh, I'm currently on all listing, and uh, but you can just do auction. If it's in green, it means it's sold. Okay. So you can see you have this, just as an example, how you have this 2014 kilo year of the horse. And that's listed for 689 And then you've got 10 two-ounce for 673 this one has sold at least one has sold at that price whereas here there's no indication that there's ever been a sale that's how you tell so if it's in green so this is in order of price so if we get down here we're looking for basically the cheapest one ounce silver horse now it gets a little bit more complex because remember we had that one ounce variation here so and I didn't point out when we were back on the Tiger, but the half ounce Tiger actually was 45 bucks. You could buy a one ounce Tiger cheaper than a half ounce Tiger. There's a real premium on those half ounce Tigers. And that's a combination of both the rarity of the mintage number and the aesthetics of the coin. But here we can see a one ounce silver horse, 40 bucks. Uh, and again, you know, you can go by how low it's offered. Here's one that sold 36 bucks. And then the half ounce come in here around 20 bucks. The lowest you can get those is 20 bucks. So we have a confirmed sale of a one ounce, one ounce horse, 36 bucks. Uh, and we were about $10 higher on the Tiger. Uh, but again, that's a four year difference in the coin. Uh, I said, you know, I go back and forth on these two coins. Kind of a toss up for me. I mean, this. You know, aesthetically, this this is an amazing coin. There's there's no way around that. That that is that that horse is an amazing coin. Um, so, big question for me now is, in the long run, where is this coin going to come in? I think it's going to come in on the high end. I'm I'm not going to put this coin as number three behind the tiger, the horse. Um, maybe the dragon. I'm not a big fan of that 2012 dragon, but maybe that's up there. But I am going to say I think this coin is probably going to be in the top five, in my opinion, aesthetically. How much of an impact is that going to have? Well, there's a lot of factors. The first factor is the premium. We're now looking at a $4 premium over Silver Eagles and Maples. That's the first time we've seen that sort of deal. Um, as far as when the one ounce coin was available. You have to remember that for the last large number of years, these uh, one ounce lunar coins were not available at a low price out of the gate. They, they just weren't. That's why we were, we were stacking the half ounce and stacking the two ounce because the one ounce just weren't available at a low price or at a comparable price. So there's a lot of factors there. Uh, if if a lot of people see this one ounce coin and they see that four dollar premium, 
over silver eagles and they say no that's just too much and they don't buy it uh, that may mean that there's not going to be that many minted here I did an analysis and looked and saw how many of the one ounce how many in the half ounce and how many of the two ounce it appears that these ordered and they all ordered them roughly in about the same amounts maybe about 1200 ounces of silver each uh, so that's going to be a big factor because we know that Perth Mint uh, does mintages. Uh, sometimes they do that 300,000. Uh, I'll have to address that in another video as to whether they're doing that this year. But sometimes they automatically do 300,000. Other times they only do it to the amount that are uh, ordered by people. And I think that's the half ounce and the two ounce. I think the one ounce gets that automatic. But that can change and it has changed in the past so that's another thing to keep an eye on so I'm gonna revisit this one in the future right now overall I'm gonna say thumbs up on this one the four dollar premium gives me pause but if you look back in history if you would have if you could take a time machine back to 2009 or 2013 and someone told you, would you rather have an eagle for two bucks less or have a horse? Or would you rather have a tiger for two bucks less? Or, or would you rather pay four bucks more for a tiger or have an eagle? It's pretty obvious which one you would have taken back then. The question is going to apply going forward. I'm leaning towards I think it will. And uh, it, it's going to be worth probably stacking at least a few of these one ounce dogs. And we'll talk to you next time.